Hi, certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd just do a fun little painting. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got going up here. Standard old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched canvas, but you use whatever size is convenient. Today I've taken and I put a little bit of uh, just masking tape around the edges underneath here and I covered the edges with a little bit of black gesso. Then I've just got some paper here to keep, to keep from painting on the black gesso. And we pull that out, we'll have a black border that goes all the way around this painting. Inside here, I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin, even coat of the liquid white, as we normally do. And from there, let's just make something that's bright and shiny, has a lot of color. It's a fantastic day here, and I hope it is wherever you're at. So let's start. Let's start today, maybe we'll lose just a touch of the Indian yellow. That's a very bright, nice yellow. A little bit on the two inch brush. And let's do something that looks like, a, let's go right up here. Something that looks like maybe a big sun shining through there. I don't know. Let's just start off and have some fun. There. Now if you can do that, you can paint the rest of this painting. That's all there is to it. We'll go right into, without cleaning the brush, a little bit of, of cad yellow. And we'll just put that right around the edge. Next color I use, little yellow ochre. I'm not cleaning the brush in between these colors because I want them to mix anyway. Just a little yellow ochre. There we go. Now then. And then I'm sort of putting this on with little crisscross strokes because it gives you little fuzzy edges that are much easier to blend together than an old harsh line. Something like that. Now then, I'm going to mix up an orange. And for that, I'll use a little cad yellow, a little of the bright red. I want to make a nice orange color. Something like so. Let me clean off the old knife. We just wiped the knife on a paper towel. Still haven't cleaned the brush. I'm going right into that nice orange color and just bring it right on around. Whew, this is going to be a firecracker. There. I like these nice colors. You can, if you do a painting with these colors, I tell you, it will certainly brighten up a dull room. Mm. There we go. Something about like that. All right, still haven't cleaned the brush. And we're just allowing these colors to blend together over here on the edges. Okay, just straight, straight bright red. Now we're gonna get, we're gonna get into some beautiful colors. Right there. And see, we have color on the brush and we have color on the canvas and there's liquid white under all of it. So it's continually mixing. None of it's gonna end up as pure color. Okay, now then. Still without cleaning the brush. Go into dark sienna. Still haven't cleaned the brush. And we'll just bring that right around the edge. Right around the edge, just like so. Just plain old dark sienna. Something about like that. But once again, these little crisscross strokes certainly make blending much, much easier. A little more of the dark sienna, put right up in here. Don't want that little corner left out. Okay. And we have a little hole left in the sky up there. We'll use just straight old Van Dyke Brown right in there. All right. And that's basically all we're gonna put in the sky as far as color goes. Now then, let's do the most fun thing in the whole technique, wash the old brush. That's that's really where you take out your frustrations and your hostilities. Shake off the excess paint thinner. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. There we go. Now I'm just gonna take a clean brush, dry as I can get it, and begin blending this. Just blend it, blend it, blend it, blend it. You wanna blend it until you can't tell where one color starts and the next color stops. Just work it and work it and work it. And when you're doing this, I would recommend that you sort of step back from your canvas and take a look-see every once in a while. When you're as close to it as I am, it's very difficult to tell what something looks like. Step back and take a look-see. There. And then you can really tell what you have in your world. Okay. Now then. I think I'll wash the brush again. I just look for excuses to wash the old brush. Now, 
I want this to be even brighter. So I say it's a fantastic day and everybody here is feeling good and I think we'll just, we'll just make something that's, oh, it's shiny. So I'm gonna take straight titanium white, start right here in the light area and begin blending outward. It'll mix with all those beautiful colors and it'll come brighter and brighter. And you can do this several times, several times. I recommend you at least wipe your brush between each color or even better, clean it. In the sake of time here, I'm just going back and not cleaning it, but I am wiping it in between. There we go. But boy, that rascal will shine now. Look at that. And we'll just go across to sort of take out the brush strokes and just blend everything together. Something about like that. Okay, down here, I'm gonna have some water. You know me, I, I love water. So we'll just take a little yellow and put right in here. A little cad yellow, a little, a little touch of the yellow ochre. Just reflect a little of that color into the water. A little of bright red. Doesn't much matter. There, maybe even a little, little touch of the dark sienna. Just the basic colors that we had in the sky. A little more of the dark sienna right there. Something about like that. And a little bit of Van Dyke. The Van Dyke brown will makes the edges darker. Helps, helps lead the eye into the light area. Okay. Now then, wash the old brush again, and we can blend that out. This is a good one. If nothing else, it'll teach you how to wash the brush. There. <laughs> I must admit, I just, I just really like to do that. There we go. Okay, now we'll just blend it out a little bit. And as we decide what's in the foreground here, then we can, we can add or subtract. Doesn't matter. Right at this point, we're just, we're just worried about a sky and putting some color down here where we know water is going to be. All right. I guess now we have to start making some big decisions in our world. Maybe, let me find a little fan brush. Maybe we back in the background here. Let's take a little bit of dark sienna, put a little white in it, a little white in it, maybe the least little touch of the bright red. Something like so. Just make a nice color like that. Let me wipe off the knife. There. And we'll put a little of that on our little fan brush. Just load it up. You can use number three or the number six fan brush. It doesn't matter. Let's go right up in here. Maybe there's a, well, maybe there's a little, maybe there's a little island back here. What the heck? Make up little, just little ideas, huh? Didn't matter. Just want to show the indication of something that's far, far away back here. Far away. There. We're not looking for a lot of detail. But now we want to have a reflection, so we'll pull a little bit of that color down, too. Take our old brush, old two-inch brush, grab that, and give it a little downward pull, zip, go across. Gives us some instant reflections under there. And take a little bit of the liquid white, put it on the palette, least little touch, least little touch of the bright red into it. Just to give it a little, a little pinkish taste. Cut across. Get our little bit of paint. It lives right on the edge of the knife there. Then we can go up and we'll just cut in a happy little water line. Just a little separator. Just a little separator here. Now if you ever do a water line that you think is too bright, just clean your knife and go back and rub it. And it'll go away. It'll go away. You can rub it till it just totally disappears if you want to. Up to you. That worked pretty good. If it works good, let's do it again. Take that same color, except I'm gonna add a little more of the dark sienna and maybe a little Van Dyke brown to it. Wanna darken it slightly. As things get closer to you in the landscape, they should get a little darker, okay? Now, maybe, maybe there's another little, little doer, little peninsula, whatever. It sticks right out here, this might be Maybe it's the half of another little island. I don't know. Don't know. It's your world. You decide what it is. Just lift upward, 
make it look like little distant trees and stuff that are growing back here. Pull down. Once again, we need that reflection. If you ever paint a little projection out into the water like this and it doesn't look right, it looks like it's floating on top of the water, way above it, chances are it just needs a reflection underneath it. And that reflection causes it to set down into the water. There, come across. Once again, our little, little reflection. We'll come back in here, take a little bit of that liquid white that we had, and we'll put another happy little water line right in there. And you could make as many as these little, these little islands or projections or peninsulas, whatever you want to call them, as you want. Or as few, maybe you don't want any. It's up to you, up to you. There's total freedom on this canvas. Here you can do anything that you want to do. Anything that you want to do. All right, shoot. You know what, maybe there's some more there our world and we can do it if we want to. I'm going to use that same color, only a little darker. I'm going to put a little lizard and crimson in it now. A little crimson. Ooh, that's nice. I like that color. So it's just basically the two browns, the lizard and crimson, a little white. Let me wipe off the knife. We'll just keep using this old fan brush. It's working pretty good. So if it's working, as my father used to say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, and it's not broke. Let's go back up here. Maybe there's a big group of, big one, like this, only big, it's closer. So we'll use the brush this way and just tap down. You know, I got a little piece of film I want to show you today. It's so fantastic, you know, I love, I love animals and I work with animals all over the country. I'm just gonna be doing this while we're looking. And animals have a special affection for children. And my young friends love animals. This is my friend Paul. And he lives right outside of Orlando. And, and his grandmother is Carmen Shaw, who's one of the animal rehab people. This young man, he is so cute. And this little baby raccoon he has here, isn't he precious? Paul and I sat and talked for quite a while. And, and he told me a lot about animals. This, this young fellow, since his grandmother has worked with animals for many years. He's grown up literally around these animals. He knows more about animals probably than I do. And he has a special thing. He's inherited his grandmother's, well, I don't know. I think, I think animals know when people really like them and they trust them. And this young fella has that. But isn't he cute? There. See, all I'm doing is just putting up some indications here trees. I want a little more detail in these than I had back here, so I'm using the brush this way, sort of vertical. Now then I need some mist in there. We'll just take a clean brush, two inch brush, and tap. And tap. You could even you could even put a little touch of white paint or a little white with maybe even a little yellow on your brush. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. It's easier to show. Take a little cad yellow, little white and you could tap that in to create, a, to create a nice misty effect back here. See how it looks like mist laying there already? And then gently lift up. It just takes out the little tap marks and sort of blends it together. Now then, once again, as you know, we want to set in the water, we have to put a little reflection under here. You have to decide where it lives and put a reflection. Go across. There. Isn't that neat? Now I think, I think, let me grab another fan brush. I have several of them going here. I think maybe we need some trees that are even closer. By putting all these layers in your painting, or planes as they're called, it helps create that illusion of depth and distance in your world. I'm just using straight Van Dyke, dark sienna, and alizarin crimson. And we're just mixing them together here, like that. Maybe a little more crimson. I like that little reddish hue. Okay, let me wipe off this old knife. Just clean them off. Now, once again, back to the old fan brush, loaded full of color. A lot of paint. A lot of paint. Don't be afraid of getting too much color in there. Don't think you can do that. Let's go up in here. Maybe in our world, there's a big, strong tree that lives right there. 
notice that this tree is darker in color than the one behind it. So it stands out now. There. There he is. There he is. He lives right there. He's got a friend right there. Even trees need friends. And it's rare that you find just one tree growing in an area. Usually, usually there's several little trees. You know how it goes. Little trees get together and pretty soon there's a whole mess of little trees. That's what makes them wonderful. We'll just let them get a little smaller so it helps create that illusion of going down, downhill there a little bit. Maybe this one's a little bigger. Don't have each one of them progressively getting smaller or progressively getting bigger because trees do not follow the rules like we do. They grow however makes them happy. However makes them happy. It's like a lot of times in art, we're told that you have to have odd numbers of things. Now, artistically, that looks better. There's no question about that. It looks much better. But in nature, nobody ever told the trees that rule. So if you're painting a scene from nature and you want to have an even number of trees, it's your world. You can do whatever you want. There, we'll just take a little dark, that dark color. Just put the indication here and there of a little trunk. It's the same exact color, but it shows up. A few little trees and stuff. Now then, when we got that old color going, I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of yellow ochre right on there. Just come back in here and here and there, and there and here, we don't want much. A few little indications of some highlight. I want to keep this dark, real dark, because that's what makes it stand out from what's behind it. Maybe. We just take the old fan brush. That's working pretty good. Maybe there's just a nice little grassy area that lives right underneath the trees. Just push up a little dark color. The dark colors there, only so our light will show. You can't have light unless you have dark. That dark is what makes it show. Just like in life, you, you, can't, you can't appreciate the good times unless you have a few bad ones. That's what makes us appreciate the good times when they happen. There, a few little reflections, go across, something like that. That's all we need. Tell you what, tell you what, maybe in our world, maybe, let me clean off my knife here. Maybe we back in the distance there, I'm gonna use a small knife. Maybe there lives, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do something else first. Change my mind. And it's our world, we can do that. I wanna put a little highlight on that grassy area. Use a little yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow. Maybe even a little touch of the bright red now and then. See, that flattens it out. Makes it look more like, it's a, like a little flat area. I think that looks a little better, don't you? There. Now then, back to our little knife. Maybe back here in our world, maybe there's just a little tiny, we can see wee back, a little tiny house. That's the reason I'm using a small knife. There's his little roof. Don't want a lot of detail, he's too far away. Sits right out there on the edge of this gorgeous place. We'll put a few little grassy areas right around his foots. That's where I want to live, right next to that water. I love water. I've always wanted to, to have a home right on the water. And maybe one day I will. There, put just a little highlight on the roof. Just enough to make him sparkle a little bit. Now, I don't want that little house to get lonely. Tell you what, maybe, come right up in here. Maybe there's one that lives right here, too. He's a little closer, so he'll look a little bigger. There, and we can put as many or as few as we want in our world. Maybe this one's actually out in the water. Maybe he's on stilts. Maybe this is a little fishing village. Maybe we just keep making up things here. We'll have a, we'll have a whole, <laughs> Whole group of things. I don't know. You just sort of let these things happen. Okay, want a village? There's another one. How many's in our village? I don't know. I'm just putting in some dark areas. Maybe, shoot, maybe there's another one there. Doesn't matter. 
because in your world you can do anything that you want to do. Just all kinds of little things. We'll take a little white, a little brown, a little, little bit of the lizard crimson, yellow ochre. Just mix them together. I want some, some nice colors. Oh, that's coming out. But I want to leave them marbled. So when we put little highlights on the roofs, I guess that's the word, roofs, more than one roof, it'll separate them. Just a little, all kinds of little variations going on in there. And we'll take some white and just black, just midnight black to make a nice gray color. Maybe some of them are gray up here. Ooh, I like that. And we can take the white, the gray, all those colors, just mix them together. Put all kinds of little sides on there. Come back with just a touch of color. Maybe you can make out a little window indication here and there. These are too far away to have a lot of detail, so don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Maybe we said this, maybe these were on the little stilts. So we'll put the indication here and there, some little stilts that they're standing on. See there? It's just indications. Once again, too far away to worry about a great deal of detail. There. Now then, I want to reflect those stilts into the water. So I just grab them, pull them down, and that easy. That easy. Take a little bit of the liquid white and just make a little ripple here and there. Just little ripples. Tell you what, let's get crazy. Maybe right here. Ooh, I'm going to go right over the top of that. That's all right. We'll just go right over. Maybe there's a bigger one that lives right here. This one's sort of looking more toward us. Something about like that. Come back with our highlight color. Put a little edge right there. A little indication there. Come right down in here. There. Maybe there's a little walkway around there. I don't know. Make up little things. If it's out in the water, he's got to have a way to walk around his little building. Maybe there's a little door. How about a little window? We can do that too. It's our world. A little highlight around there. Little, maybe just a few little, few little posts that stick down in the water, like that. Make them a little longer than than they actually should be, because we're gonna pull some of them down and turn it into reflections. See, choo, choo. Then just go across, just enough to wiggle it. There, come on, like that. Just enough to put some little ripples here and there. Now, let's grab an old one inch brush. I'm gonna go into the browns, crimson, little black, whatever. Maybe even a touch of the Prussian blue. Don't want much blue though, just a little blue. Just to darken it. Maybe there's some bushes that live right here. Choo, choo, choo. Just throw them in. Least little bit of blue now. Least little bit. All kinds of little things live right there. Take that same brush, go into some yellow ochre, Indian yellow, cad yellow. Just get some nice yellow. Put a few little highlights on these bushes. I use these colors, a little red too, just cause they sort of match the sky, and keeps everything together. There. Just a few little bushes live here. Maybe, maybe even there's a few posts out here. Bloop. There's another one, there's one, wherever you want them. Maybe one of them over here. There's some old posts that are still hanging around. A little bit of that brown and white. Just touch, give it a little pull, bloop, bloop. Something like so. A little bit of paint thinner, maybe. Maybe there's still indication of some old, maybe there's some wires out here, I don't know. Whatever you'd like for it to be. Most of them are broke down, but there's still a few here and there. There and here. 
Now we have that old color. We pull up a few old weeds and sticks. There, something like that. Now then, let's see if we can, let's take this off and see what we got. I'm just gonna lay the palette down. I had a little paper here just to keep the black from getting messed up. We'll take that off. And then let's come in here and take off this layer of tape. That sort of gives us a, a nice border that goes all the way around the painting. There. Just something like so. This is just plain, ordinary old masking tape. Nothing big. But isn't that neat? I like these little things done like that. Now watch, watch. In our world, there's one more post, and it lives right out here. Something like so. I'm going to let it come right into the white so it shows up good. A little bit of highlight color. Let it just work right around like that. Take our little fan brush. Put a little dark right in there. So it... A little bit of the yellow ochre, Indian yellow. Put a few little highlights on that rascal. Something about like that. Just to make it look like little grassy areas. Back to our liner brush. And let's take maybe this piece of wire here and bring it... Right on out, just like so. So it looks like it projects right on out of the painting. Isn't that neat? I think you'll like this one. Give it a try. Send me a photo of your attempt. I'd love to see it. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend.